In this video, I'll be answering questions submitted by PaintShop Pro users on a variety of topics. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written copy of this QA session and submit your own questions to be answered in future videos. Our first question is, does the sepia frame script only work for images in landscape orientation? When I try to use it for portrait or square images, the final image is distorted. It's true that the sepia frame script only works for landscape images, specifically 5x7. I'll right click in the toolbar area and choose Toolbars Script, find the sepia frame script, and run. With this photo, the results are great. But with this photo, running the script causes the image to be stretched horizontally. So I have a few options. I could crop the photo to fit a landscape orientation, which isn't the best option for this particular photo. I could also choose Image, Picture Frame, where the transparent frame produces a similar look. I also have options for setting the frame inside or outside the image, and I could rotate the frame to fit other orientations. A third option would be to try Effects, Photo Effects, Time Machine, where the albumin effect resembles sepia and can include photo edges. Finally, here's how to recreate the sepia frame script for any photo. First, I'll promote the background layer to change it to a raster layer, then duplicate the layer. The duplicated layer is now selected. The top layer will contain the image, and the bottom layer will contain the frame. To replicate the photo part of the sepia frame effect, I'll choose the Selection tool and press Ctrl A to select the entire layer. Then with Selections, Modify, Contract, I'll reduce the selected area to resemble the effect. If Preview on Image is checked, I can see where to stop. To remove the frame from this layer, I'll choose Selections, Invert, press Delete to remove the pixels of the frame, then Ctrl D to deselect everything. If I turn off the bottom layer, I can see that the frame was deleted. For the washout effect on the photo, I'll choose Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Hue Saturation Lightness. The values in the script are negative 57 for saturation and 0 for everything else, but you could play with these values. The script also adds a thin white outline around the photo, so I'll use the Magic Wand Selection tool, either with a very high tolerance or with Match Mode set to None, to select the entire photo. Then I'll choose Selections, Modify, Select Selection Borders with an inside border and adjust the border width. Now with a foreground color of white, I'll activate Flood Fill and paint the selected area. If I wanted the flexibility to adjust this border later, I could promote this selection to its own layer, but I'll leave it as is and deselect. The last step is to adjust the frame. I'll turn that layer back on and make it active, and choose Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Colorized. In the script, Hue is 25, and Saturation is 100. So, while it's nice to have a script, it's also nice to know how to reproduce their results. Is there a way to bend an object in PaintShop Pro? I would like to make a rose look like it is wilting over. This would be tough to do on an image with a background, so I'll demonstrate one technique for this on an image without a background. First, I'll use the Selection tool to select the flower itself and a bit of the stem. I'll cut the selection with Ctrl-X, then choose Edit, Paste as New Layer. Ctrl-D unselects everything. With the new layer active, I'll use the Pick tool to move and rotate it to look like the flower is wilting. If the stems were joined, it would look like the stem was broken, so I'll leave a small gap. To match the stem color, I'll use the dropper tool and make sure there is no fill. Then I'll activate the pen tool and set a line width that matches the stem. With point to point and connect segments, I'll drag out some connected curves. It's not perfect and would probably look fine when zoomed out, but I can make this area slightly more realistic. First, I'll select all layers and merge them so that I'm down to just one layer with nothing in the way. Then I'll activate the Clone tool, right-click to sample an area from the stem, and left-click a few times on my pen curve to add some texture. I'll right-click to sample from this part of the stem as well, and fill in the rest. If I want to use this rose in another image, 
I'll drag its single layer into the new photo. While this new layer is active, I'll use the Pick tool to resize and move, then I'll select what I want to remove and press the Delete key. I would like to use a font that I downloaded from Font Fabric, but I don't know how to import that font into PaintShop Pro. Any font installed in your Windows system can be used in PaintShop Pro. For one way to see what fonts you have, open your Control Panel app, click Fonts, and here's the list of installed fonts. In PaintShop Pro, when I activate the Text tool, the same fonts appear in the drop down menu. Now, say I've gone to Font Fabric and downloaded a free font called Bukhari Script. With most font sites, the download is a zip file, which you need to right click and choose Extract All. In this example, I've extracted and drilled down to the True Type font folder. I can right click on the font file and choose Install, or I can double click the font file to display a few lines in the font. This window has an Install button. Once installed, I can go back to PaintShop Pro where my text tool is still active. In the font dropdown, I'll search for the font I just installed, and here it is. After cropping an image, how do I accept the crop so I can move on? After you activate the crop tool, choose the proportion you want, which is 8 by 10 in this example, and resize and move the preview area, simply click the green check mark icon, which applies the crop. In a similar vein, how do I set the size of pictures that I want to print? This depends on three things, your printer's resolution, or DPI, the resolution of your image, and the proportion of the printed photo. For example, a common print resolution is 300 DPI, which means that a 1200 by 900 pixel image will print at 4 by 3 inches. But modern cameras can produce images much larger than this. In this example, the image dimensions are 4288 by 2848 pixels. At 300 dpi, this would print at about 14 inches wide. If I want to print to a 5x7 frame, I'll first activate Crop, choose that proportion, Size and Move, and Apply. Next, I'll choose Image, Resize, and click the By Print Size option. I'll use 300 dpi. Find the standard size of 5 by 7 and click OK. After some processing time, the dimensions and pixels have updated to match the new size. If I want to print at a non-standard size, I can use Crop to set the proportions I want using the Free Form option, or I can leave the image uncropped. Then I would resize as before. I could set the pixel dimensions, or shrink by a percentage, or use By Print Size as before. I'll use 300 dpi, set the width at 6 inches, and because the aspect ratio is locked, the height updates accordingly. Now my width pixel count matches its 6 inch size. This brings us to the end of our PaintShop Pro Q&A session. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll also find a written version of this tutorial, and you can submit your own questions to be answered in future videos.